research tips from Monica Wahi of Death Wench Professional Services. Visit us at www.deathwench.com and let Death Wench do your data. Hi, this is Monica Wahi again of Death Wench Professional Services. We continue to work with our fake myocardial infarction or MI survivor data set. Okay, in previous videos, we made two variables. One of them was called MI60, which is a one zero variable, which means they got another heart attack within 60 days or not. The second variable we made was called Timmy, which is a risk score index for having heart attacks. In this video, we build a logistic regression model where we use Timmy to predict MI60. Now, this is different than in SAS. In R, first you make a regression object, and then you have to do a summary of the object to see what the printout says. I'll show you. So here's the code uh, that I'm talking about. First, we're gonna make a regression object. We're gonna name it Logit MI60. How do we know we're making it? There's the little arrow. GLM, sounds familiar. GLM, we hear about this in other software. General Linear Model. So general that between the parentheses, the last thing, well, the last thing I put in this one, but you have to throw this in there, is you have to tell the General Linear Model what family you're talking about. Okay, not like, like, is it the Bush family, the Clinton family, the Obama family? No, it's the binomial family. At least they have a family, right? Some people don't have a family. So binomial is what you put here if you want to do logistic regression, as opposed to like linear regression or some other regression. Let's go and then, I actually, the next thing that I jumped ahead here, in the parentheses, in the arguments, the first thing you want to put is the outcome variable, which is MI60. So that's one zero, one if you got the MI in 60 days and zero if you didn't. Then you have this tilde, which sort of stands in the way of kind of the equals sign. And then over here is your list of covariates. We only have one, which is Timmy, our risk index that we're trying to use to uh, predict MI60. And then there's a comma. Of course, we got to tell it what data we're talking about. In this case, we're talking about Timmy underscore NM. And yeah, so this is gonna give us, um, well, don't expect any output here, right? Because all we're doing is making an object. So you do this a lot in R where you make objects and then you have to peek at them. I guess it's so you can shield your eyes just in case, you know, because you know when sometime, something's gonna kind of look like a train wreck so you can just get mentally prepared or a SAS just throws it right at you. All right. So we've created Logit MI60. Now we're gonna look at it, so get ready. And this fake data, so don't get too upset. So here we go, here's our summary. So let's just unpack this a little bit. Here's our call up here, you know about that. Here are our deviance residuals, not too interesting. You recognize the word coefficient. Here's estimate, standard error, Z value, and bleh, bleh. okay. That's p-value in English. That's the p-value for each of the estimates. So the first one is our intercept, right? Can't have a line without an intercept. Here's our estimate, standard error, whatever. I don't care about the intercept. Here's what I care about. This is our x, Timmy. Here's our estimate, standard error. Is about ugly p-value. That's what you get when you make fake data. So if anything, if you want to get ahead in your career and you make fake data, try and do it. You're gonna get what I get, which is 0.9592, which is a crappy p-value. I just wanna point out down here that we got this awesome p-value on our intercept, which doesn't matter one bit, but they, like R just automatically gives you these significance codes. So here's the triple threat, double threat, single threat. In other words, you want asterisks in here. The more asterisks you get, the quicker you get tenure or whatever. That's just the more significant your covariate is. Okay, uh, you're probably going, all right, what if I wanna do some model fit and not seeing a lot? Well, just jump down here, here's the AIC. Notice, do not confuse this with the AUC, which is not in the picture, okay? The AUC just ducked out of the picture before we took it. Watch one of my other videos, the PROC video, to figure out how to do the AUC. It's not that hard, but it just 
steps out of the picture. You got to go find it. All right. Now, if you're a SAS person, you're like, where's my negative two log likelihood? And I'm like, honey, get over it. It's not that easy to get in R, but you can handle it because R is a very, will present to you deviance. Okay, admittedly, I just pointed out the numbers that came out natively on that printout. In SAS, if you want more model fit numbers, you just specify more options. But in R, you do more fancy things to that regression object. So that's outside the scope of this video. That would be a good topic for a future video. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to move on to next is, well, what if you want to shove another X into the equation over on the right side of the equation, right? Like you want to adjust for age. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so what if you want to add more than one X? So let's just clear this console. It's ugly. Okay, so I mean, um, you will, first of all, you have to make a new regression object because this one's going to be different. So I called this Logit MI60 adjusted. What am I going to do? Adjust for age. What do we always do? And then adjust for sex, adjust for this, adjust for that. What do they call them? The usual suspects, right? Well, you recognize all this. This is all the same. So how do you tack on another covariate? We have age at pres, you put a plus sign. Now I know, I know, you're probably like, well that's pretty simple. Yeah, but when you're in a hurry and you're programming and you can't remember, it's a big pain to figure out what you put there. Because in SAS, normally you just make a laundry list. You don't have to put anything in between it. In SQL, oh, where's what's this laundry list? You need to put commas. You know, everybody's so picky these days. Why doesn't everybody agree? All right, so we're going to make this new regression object. And then we're going to look at the new regression object with the summary command. I just want to let you know there's other commands that you can do on regression objects. I just don't cover them here because I'm in a hurry. I'm trying to do logistic regression project. All right, so here we go. Nothing's really different. Of course, the numbers are different. Everything is in the same sort of place, but I'll just point out here's our additional covariate. And obviously, when you make fake data, even age isn't significant. So there, some bare bones basic code to get you started with a logistic regression model. Admittedly, I don't really go into much model fit. That's for a future video. But now you can at least get going in logistic regression in R. This is Monica Wahi reminding you to let Deathwinch do your data. If you like these research tips, visit us at deathwinch.com and let Deathwinch do your data.